Fora TV. The world is thinking. Until a couple of years ago, if you asked almost anyone in the ancient DNA community if we were going to be able to clone a mammoth, you would have heard a resounding no. But, as always, the technology improves and scientists change their mind. With living species, the only type of cloning that's possible to do at the moment uses a single complete nucleus that's taken from a cell and put into an egg cell that's waiting and ready to go, starts dividing. There's no evidence from any of the work that we've done in the Arctic that you're ever going to be able to find a complete, non-broken down, non-decayed nucleus in any cells from anything. Mummies, actually, are even worse for DNA decay than naked bones that we find. And this is probably because when you have a mummy, the process of mummification includes a stage where you've got a lot of bacteria in the system, probably from the gut, that really works to break down the DNA. So mummies aren't actually very well preserved. But even in the very well preserved bone fragments, you don't even come close to having a complete nucleus. However, it might be possible someday for us to actually build a complete mammoth genome by getting all the bits and pieces of broken DNA we have and piecing them together. To illustrate, I have brought with me this box from my favorite local bakery. But rather than being filled with delicious morsels of sugary goodness, it's filled with these bits of ribbon that I've chosen to use to represent chromosomes from a mammoth. Would you hold some of these for me? Here, I've got some mammoth chromosomes. Here, here. You want me to wear them? Oh, you can wear them if you like. Hey, anyone else like some mammoth chromosomes? Go on, here. Here, here go. Have some chromosomes. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's oh, have a pink one as well. Everybody needs a pink chromosome. Yeah. Okay. You can spread them out among your friends. That sort of exciting thing. Okay, so <clears throat> in a mammoth, you have about three and a half billion A, C's, G's, and T's, those nucleotides, right? Three and a half billion of them. And it's pretty much the same as us. I see you're enjoying your chromosomes. That's good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you've broken yours. <laughs> Mutation. So these three and a half billion base pairs are divided into, in a mammoth, 58 different chromosomes. Okay? They're all different sizes, but for the sake of simplicity, let's average and say that means about 60 million nucleotides per one of these things. Okay. For the very best preserved bone specimens that we've been able to collect in the Arctic, we get, on average, before you come to a piece that's been broken by any of these decay processes that I've been talking, maybe 300 nucleotides. So that would be something like this. <laughs> Actually, no, because I don't think I could fit 60 million of these on here. So we're going to have to use our imaginations, right? This, but much, much smaller. Got it? OK. So 300. 60 million, that's about 200,000 of these for each one of these. There are, oh, and probably we'll want some overlap so we can actually piece them together. So let's say 400,000 of these for each of these, times 58 of these. Yeah, that's what? About 25 million sequences, something around there? Yeah. Right now, that's about a dollar a pop. So I'll leave you to do that calculation. Oh, yeah, and there's going to be damage in it because it's ancient, so it's going to be a bit broken down. So it's going to be damaged. Um, so we'll probably want to do it at least twice. So $50 million? Yeah, that's all right. Um, yeah, that's all right. Um, and actually, there's some new sequencing techniques that are out there that make it a little bit cheaper than this. So rather than targeting these fragments, they actually come up with lots of little smaller fragments. And um, really, what you end up with is something like I like to make a mess. <laughs> so then you've got to try to take that and make these. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more complicated than that as well, actually, because 
not very much of your genome is actually doing anything, and quite a lot of it is repetitive. Uh, meaning that if you get this 300 base pair fragment out of here, you don't actually know if this particular fragment belongs on this one or on one of these over, over. You think it goes here? Yeah, I think it goes. It's the wrong color. It's another mutation. Mutation! <laughs> yeah, it goes, oh, it definitely goes there. Yeah. And because most of our genes are actually turned on and off, by virtue of being some fixed distance from some other important bit. We generally don't know where the important bits are, but they're spread all across these different chromosomal ribbons. Um, could be that if I stick this piece in here, rather than in that piece of chromosome over there, that we end up with a mammoth with eight legs and no tusks. Well, probably not. That's probably a bit of an exaggeration. But anyway, it gives you some idea of the scope of this particular problem, right? But I think an important thing to note about all of these problems that I'm trying to illustrate here today is that these are all technical in nature. Who's to say that we're not going to be able to come up with a cheaper and faster way to sequence a mammoth genome or uh, better statistical algorithms to be able to uh, build these things together and figure out where the right place for all these different bits and pieces of ripped up paper. It's not ripped up paper, it's genetics. <laughs> Actually go in the genome. This could be within the next five years, for all I know. Of course, there is more to it than that. Again, once we have these particular chromosomes, we still have no idea how to wrap these chromosomes up into something useful, stick them into a nucleus, and then find an egg cell that's actually going to take them. But again, these are all technical problems. And we could, in my lifetime, maybe the lifetime of my students, we could come up with a way to do this. Who knows? Sorry, moving on here. Oh, you can't see him. This is, a, this is a baby mammoth that was found preserved in the ice in Yamal last summer. Um, it's probably only a few days old, uh, which is a bit of a shame you can't see it. A really beautiful specimen, incredibly well preserved. Just shows you how really amazing some of the stuff is that's coming out of the Arctic.